the average guy on Tinder is not getting matches. So if your profile is boring and average, you're going to get the average result, which is no matches. In 20 years doing online dating, I've pretty much heard it all. I'm too short, I'm the wrong skin color, I'm not good looking enough. So I've heard all this since basically the dawn of internet dating when I you know, started out learning myself. And that's really quite sad because for all that time, online dating has been one of the absolute easiest ways to meet a lot of girls and high quality girls even in your area on a consistent basis. And the fact is whether you like it or not, online dating has absolutely changed the dating landscape. Almost every single man and every single woman at some point in their dating career will be on these apps, if not that being their primary dating source for years and years and years. Um, it's amazing how many marriages, how many relationships are starting online these days. So if you're not utilizing this resource, you're just frankly being highly, highly inefficient and you're missing a huge opportunity. This is obviously true of Tinder, which is the stated title of this video. However, it's also true on Match, OkCupid, Bumble, Hinge, and probably any other site that's likely to come around in the near future. So while a huge portion of the dating landscape has moved online and tons and tons of guys are getting success with online, just like in live dating, it's a few guys getting success and a lot of guys really, really struggling. So why is it that the majority of guys struggle massively and get almost no results with online dating if it is in fact so easy? So if you've tried Tinder or online dating and you found you just get no matches at all, or you get matches that are not exactly sexually appealing to you, or every single time you message a girl, she just seems to go silent and you get nowhere, or if you've just been so confused or intimidated you haven't even tried, this video is for you. I'm gonna tell you the most common mistakes, how to solve them, and how to very quickly get this working for you. So let's dive in. I'm gonna go into four of the biggest mistakes guys make online and how to very quickly fix them. First, extremely common mistake that I have to address, it's not the one you wanna hear, but it's the one you need to hear, is your photos. And by this, I do not mean you have to be a good looking guy. You don't have to have a perfect jaw, you do not have to have six pack abs. I think I'm a pretty average looking guy and over the last several years at the very least, I've not been in the absolute best shape, but I've still been able to crush it online. I have a friend who is a, a professional photographer, so he knows how to take a photo. He's not particularly good looking in my opinion, but he does incredibly well online because he can take photos that make him look really good. And you can do the same with just a little bit of time and attention and possibly shelling out just a little bit to get photos taken by someone who knows what the heck they're doing. Put yourself in her shoes for a second. You're swiping on Tinder. What's the first thing you see? you see the guy's photos. He may have an incredible bio. He may have an incredible Instagram. He may be compatible with you on so many levels, but if his first photo turns you off and you swipe left before you look at the rest of it, all of that is wasted. And so for that simple reason, your photos matter a lot. Over the years, I've done a ton of coaching guys on their profiles, and especially during this pandemic, I've had a lot of guys come to me, and we've gone very in-depth working through exactly what to do to get them success. And I see the same photo mistakes over and over again. Oh, and one quick note on photos, almost any guy, no matter how you look, can get good photos. I've gotten some not very aesthetically attractive guys in a typical sense to get great photos and great results with online dating. And that is because one, taking a good photo makes up for a lot. And the second thing is it's less about your looks, i.e. the symmetry of your face and, and your features, than it is about your look. If you get well-dressed, you get well-lit, you get a cool shot, you can do a lot with that. One of the biggest mistakes is just simply poorly taken photography i.e. bad lighting, um, weird shadows on your face, like weird, like the shadows make you, you look like your raccoon because you have like sh shadows around your eyes I've seen. Um, really terrible angles where like you're actually a decent looking guy but you just look fat in that particular photo or look fat in that particular angle. Or you have like one facial feature that is just like, you know, in a weird angle to the camera and it juts out weird. Just you need to take some care with your photos and, and having someone who knows what they're doing will help a lot. But the other thing that helps a lot is just a little bit of elbow grease, a little bit of hard work. In general, when you take photos, you're gonna take maybe 100 photos and choose like two of them. And that's completely fine. You don't have to take one shot and be like, oh, there's the one, I'm gonna use it, okay? Professional photographers who have been training for years don't even do that. So yes, get someone who knows what they're doing. Um, have a friend who does photography, go hire a professional. You can find someone on, on, uh, on Craigslist for not even that expensive uh, to get your photos taken. It's not that hard to get at least something decent. Um, but the other thing is just do a little bit of diligence, be willing to go through and pick the best photo. And beyond that, you can even get your photos retouched a little bit. I do say a little bit, don't be like 50 pounds overweight and retouch so you have a six pack, don't be dishonest with it. But you can, you can get rid of a little blemish here and there. Um, lots and lots of people do it, girls do it too, I promise you they do. 
Beyond the technical things like lighting and the angle of the shot and those kind of things, there's also your pose. And most guys are absolutely egregiously bad at taking photos, okay? Either they have like the deer in headlights look like nothing's going on and they just like lay, look lame and dopey, or they have some kind of like, like forced smile, I can't even do it on command, but some kind of lame um, or even almost um, apologetic smile, that's the worst, I see that way too often. Um, practice posing, all right? Hot girls practice posing. It sounds vapid, it sounds superficial, it probably is, but they do it and it makes them look better in photos. You can do the same. If you were to spend like half an hour, an hour, just practicing different looks in the mirror, seeing what looks good on you, seeing what doesn't look good on you, and remembering how it feels in your face when you actually take the photos, you will photograph much better. I used to be incredibly terrible at taking photos. Now I'm at least decent, right? Because I've taken a lot of photos in my life and I've, I've kind of practiced, I've kind of seen what shots work. Just put in the effort, put in a little bit of time to figure that out. Next thing to avoid the deer in the headlights thing or to avoid just like looking kind of un, uninteresting in your photos and looking dull in your photos. What I really try and do when I take photos myself is whenever the photo is being taken, I try and have a thought in my head. So I'm thinking like, thinking a cocky thought, thinking a funny thought, thinking a, a, a sexy thought, something or another. Cause the thought that you have in your head is being communicated to the camera. If you're like, just like off in space and not thinking anything when the photo is taken, you're gonna look like a space cadet in the photo and it's not gonna be at all attractive. It's also possible for photos to just make you look lame. Let's say you are, maybe it's a photo of you and your friends and I hate to rag on anybody's friends, but maybe your friends don't look like the coolest, most popular people. I'm sorry, don't get rid of them as friends. I'm sure they're wonderful people. Enjoy your time with them, but it's just not the foot that when you put forward is gonna make you look the best for girls. Photos where you are with girls make you look better. Photos with your, where you're with attractive girls make you look good as well. Photos where you and your friends are doing something cool or looking cool make you look good. Um, photos where you're doing a cool activity, if you've traveled to a foreign country, if you're doing something you're good at and it looks impressive, all of those things are positives. All those things are sort of conveying extra about your life. Something I tell guys when creating profile and photos is every single thing you put in there should be conveying a specific thing about you. It should be conveying a message to the girl that is attractive. If you can't explain how this photo is helping you, you should probably leave it out. And the reason for that is you're gonna be judged on your worst photo. Have you ever been flipping through Tinder and you see, you know, oh, she looks cute. She looks, oh, wait, 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 wait. She uh, needs to go on a diet, Never mind. And that one photo that was bad made you swipe left on her, whereas you're like, oh, I'll swipe right, oh, no, no, I won't, okay? One bad photo ruins many good photos. In fact, it's probably gonna be assumed that your worst photo is how you actually look. So this all sounds really superficial, right? Well, it is. Online dating is inherently a bit superficial. And I know you wanna genuinely connect with a girl and you want a girl who likes you for you and all those things. And you can absolutely have that once you get her attention and you're on her radar. But if she's swiped left on you before she can realize you have a cool personality, I'm sorry, you're just out of luck. So play the game just a little bit up front and then you can convey all the wonderful things about your personality on the back end. I'll probably be doing more videos in the future where I talk more in depth about photos. So if you don't wanna miss those, be sure and subscribe. Be sure and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on them. The next major reason why guys don't get results on Tinder is their profile sucks. Now I know you think that Tinder is just all about the photos and the profile doesn't matter. And that is actually a little more true than it is on some other dating apps. For example, a longer form app like a match.com or an OkCupid or something like that, the profile matters a bit more than it does on Tinder. And in fact, on Tinder, the profile should largely be shorter than on those other apps, but that doesn't mean that it's irrelevant. It doesn't mean it doesn't make a huge, huge difference in how you are being perceived. Even if you have a short profile, a short good profile is massively better than a short bad profile or even better than a long bad profile. So what makes a profile good or bad? The number one type of bad profile I see is not actually unattractive or a huge turnoff. It's just boring. It just looks and sounds exactly like every other guy on the site. It's just like, you know, I work hard and I play hard and I have a good job, but I like to play with my dog on the weekends and my mom says I'm nice. It's just shit she's heard a million times before. When I see one of those profiles within two sentences, I don't even get to the rest. I'm just like, oh, it's another one of these. Okay, goodbye, right? And I, you know, when I'm swiping as a guy, I see the same thing from girls. I see these dull ass profiles. Fortunately, girls usually are being you know, judged more on their appearance and they can get away with it a little more. As guys, we're not, right? We're being judged on your appearance. That's why the photos matter, but we're also being judged on our personality. So if your personality is lame and boring and makes her yawn, she's probably just gonna swipe away and not continue interacting with you, okay? You need to get her attention in some way. Put it this way, the average guy on Tinder is not getting matches. 
So if your profile is boring and average, you're going to get the average result, which is no matches. Right? The distribution of matches on Tinder is that 10% of guys are getting 90% of the matches, most likely. Maybe it's 80, 20, but anyway, a small percentage is getting a huge percentage of the matches and the average guy is getting almost nothing. So what I can recommend to you is don't be average. This is especially true if you're getting some matches, but not the hottest ones, not the ones you really want. If that's the case, you're likely getting the matches in spite of your profile. That means you're gonna get the matches based on just your photos or based on just the girl being desperate and not having high standards, which means you're gonna get girls that are of what you'd probably consider to be a lower caliber on average, all right? If you have a cool bio that once the girl is interested in your photos, she actually goes, oh, this guy's actually really cool. That's when you are gonna set yourself apart and that's when you're gonna get the hottest girls. And especially the more attractive the girl, the more she's actually gonna care about your bio once she actually hopefully reads it after seeing your photos, right? She's gonna care about your, your bio more because she has plenty of guys that are decent looking and plenty of options in that regard. She wants the guy who actually is interesting and high value and those kind of things. So your profile needs to do that. It can't not stand out. One quick note on boring profiles. A lot of guys know they don't know how to write a profile, so instead of writing a boring profile, they just leave it blank. And to be fair, that's probably a little bit better than a truly boring profile, because at least it's like you have this kind of air of, oh, I didn't even feel like trying, oh, I didn't want to, whatever. But that's equally as boring, and you also have the issue that when a girl wants to message you, you've made it harder to message you, right? If she looks at a blank profile and she wants to message you, what the heck is she gonna say? If you write her something and there's not an easy response, how is she gonna respond? So having nothing in your profile also isn't a good idea, although it's probably better than an overtly bad profile. Obviously, writing profiles is something I could go into in crazy, crazy depth, but I do want to give you two more quick points that really do hold guys back, and they both kind of center around being low value, right? So one is conveying a low value lifestyle, right? So if it seems like you are unsuccessful in your lifestyle, it seems like you're desperate with girls in your lifestyle, anything like that is going to look really, really bad. The other thing is anything that is what I call leveling, which means it kind of indicates that you're not used to um, having success with really attractive girls, or you're you're not accustomed to getting a really good reception. Um, so anything that's that's making you look low value in your profile from the actual writing is going to be really a massive hindrance. And obviously that's a huge topic, and obviously that's something we'll have to do in another video because I could go for hours and hours on that one. But just be aware of it. So one is don't be boring. The other one is make sure that the things you're saying in your profile all come from a high value place. If you're not sure, if you're like, does this make me look low value? Leave it out. Okay, if you're unsure, leave it out. Less is more, replace it with something that you are more sure of. So those first two, the photos and the profile, you probably expected to hear from me. In fact, if you didn't expect to hear those, you're crazy. But the next one might surprise you a little bit, and that is the algorithm. See, what you have to understand is every dating site is a business, okay? They're there not to get you laid, not to get you in a relationship. That If they do that, they get to keep you as a customer longer, make you happier, or get a testimonial maybe. But the fundamental reason they're there is to make money. So how do they make money? They make money by one, having a robust system that attracts people to it, and two, having people pay, right? Having people actually pay for things, right? And we'll get to that, the paying thing later. We'll talk about whether it's right, right or wrong to pay and when you should pay and stuff in a minute. But let's talk about the algorithm. They want to keep their users happy. They want to keep the people staying on the app. And most importantly, they want to keep hot girls on the app. Because if hot girls are on the app, the guys are gonna come, all right? That's their most important user base in terms of sustainability. And so if you are doing things to piss off hot girls, you are going to be really, really shooting yourself on the foot. So if you are making fun of girls, getting unmatched a lot, saying extremely harsh or polarizing things, getting reported, any of that kind of stuff can definitely get you negative marks on your account, and that can lead to you not being shown to the hottest girls, not being shown generally at all, being put at the bottom of people's stacks, et cetera. Um, and you may think that's unfair, they're not doing that. They would be stupid not to be doing that. They're in this to make money, they're in this to run the best business they can. If their algorithm's not doing that, they're idiots. And from experience and from what I've seen, the algorithm does do that. The other thing the algorithm generally will punish, and this may not be true on every single app, but any good app, any smart app will have some version of this most likely, is that if you are swiping too liberally, if you're showing you have no standards, the algorithm is going to understand that and they're gonna give you girls of not a particular standard, right? If you're, it's actually when I was first doing Tinder, when it way back in the day, I used to actually auto swipe right and it kind of worked and it, it seemed efficient. But over time, that strategy has started to really, really, really not work and really shoot you in the foot. Think of it this way. 
the app's thinking, okay, well, he likes every girl I put in front of him. Why would I show him these girls that every guy likes and these, these girls that are massively selective? Why don't I show him these guy, girls that he's liking that you know aren't getting a lot of likes? That'll keep these girls on the user base and it won't annoy the hot girls because they're getting you know matched with this guy that has no standards. The app probably also assumes, to the extent that an app can assume, because it's not human, right? But it also probably assumes the less selective you are, the less attractive you are. And so it's not going to consider you, it's not gonna grade you as attractive and it's not gonna show you to as attractive a users for that reason also, okay? So being dumb in how you swipe, getting consistently bad responses, getting unmatched, getting especially reported or negative strikes against your profile can really, really hurt you and can sabotage you. And I know because I've had friends who did relatively well for a period of time on an app and then they did some dumb stuff and then all of a sudden they couldn't seem to get a match anymore. So be very careful. Also, and this isn't directly related to you trying to game the algorithm, it's just you doing a good job in general. But if your photos are better, not only are you more attractive to girls, but the algorithm's going to recognize you're more attractive to girls, they're swiping more on you, and they're gonna show you more liberally because that keeps more girls engaged, gets them more, more matches, and keeps them on the app more. Similarly, if your profile is good and engaging and getting you matches and making girls message with you and interact with you, that's going to make the algorithm like you more as well. So just being good at what you're doing actually not only helps you directly, but it helps you indirectly through the app as well. And that's actually another big reason why a small percentage of guys are getting huge results. It would be the case anyway, but the algorithm magnifies this effect even more. So is it possible to know every detail of the algorithm? No, I mean, it's a proprietary thing and it's going on behind the curtain, so to speak. But from experience and from logic, my advice to you is put yourself in their shoes. Put yourself in the shoes of the business that is the app. What do they want? What makes the app better, what makes them happy, what brings value to them, they are going to reward that. That's simply the case, it has to be, because if they're not doing that, some other app that is doing that is going to outcompete them and beat them in the marketplace. This next reason why you're not getting success online may be a little controversial, but I'm sticking to it, and that is that you're kind of a cheap ass, right? You're not spending money. Now I know, spending money on girls, isn't that supplicating, isn't that lame, isn't that kind of pathetic? In some ways, in some cases, yeah, it is. However, in some cases, it's also really, really effective. Let's say there are two nightclubs in a city. One costs $10 cover and one is free. One has all the hot girls for $10 cover. One has a bunch of girls you wouldn't want to talk to for free. Where is your time better spent? Is your time, is a night of your life worth 10 bucks? Pay the damn $10 cover and go to the better club. Same thing with online. If you can pay a very small amount of money and have your profile shown to all the hot girls, or you can pay no money and have all the hot girls shown everybody else's profile first and only see yours if they swipe for an hour straight, which would you prefer to be? Do you want your profile to be seen by hot girls? Your time that you're swiping, your time that you're going on dates, your time that you're spending writing your profile, taking photos, all these kind of things, this is valuable, valuable time. So rather than waste it, not getting noticed and not getting viewed and not being optimized, it's a lot better in many, many cases, maybe most cases, to pay a little bit and make your time more valuable. So things like a Tinder Gold, or now it's Tinder Platinum, very, very useful, right? Do an experiment. Assuming you have a profile that at least gets you some likes and some results. If you get zero and you multiply zero by a million, it's still, it's still zero, right? But assuming you're getting some results at all, do an experiment. Go on Tinder Gold and, and swipe and see what you get. Go on Tinder Platinum and see what you get compared to a free account. You're gonna get more on Tinder Gold and way more on Tinder Platinum currently. Because why? Same reason I mentioned before with the algorithm, because they wanna keep you if you're paying. Also, specifically with those, you have paid to be seen. Like that is the promise. If you pay this, we will show you to people this often or this much or whatever, you're getting paid more. Same thing with boosts. Boost is what? Making your profile more visible, getting you seen more over a period of time. If you pay for boosts, your profile is gonna be seen more. So. Boosts, yes, they do cost money. Is it like kind of lame to pay, spend money on girls? I guess so, but you know what's more lame? Being alone and not having a date or having girls interested in you that you're not interested in being disappointed with the quality of girls you're getting. That's a lot more lame than paying, you know, 20 bucks or 10 bucks or even five bucks for some of these things, okay? It's okay to spend a little bit of money to be seen. And if this makes you feel better, the girl is not gonna know that you paid the money to be shown to her. 
She doesn't, it's not like it pops in and says, this guy paid to be shown to you. This guy didn't. It doesn't say that. She's not going to know. It doesn't matter. It's just between you and the app. It's totally fine. And it's just a smart thing to do. And again, this goes to literally the promise the app made when you paid them, but also it goes to the algorithm. They want their paid users. That's how they make money. So they're going to do their best to make sure their paid users stay on the app. So pay a little bit. It's worth it in terms of the time in most cases. And at the very least, test it. At the very least, test it. These things are not expensive. Try it out and see if it magnifies your results. It probably will. You're probably going to be massively happy. You'll probably be glad you did. If not, you're out 20 bucks. Who the hell cares? Bottom line, online dating is one of the easiest and most efficient ways to meet girls, but you have to play by the rules. What does that mean? That means the rules of female psychology and the rules of the app. If you do those two things, you're gonna be in a really good spot. One other huge reason why guys don't get success with online dating and Tinder in particular is messaging, right? Messaging is tremendously important, probably equally as important as some of the things I've covered in this video. But the problem with covering messaging is that is an enormous topic. I could probably do 10 hour long videos on messaging alone, if not more. It's such a huge topic, there's so much to it. So yeah, there are guys who are, they, they get a match and then they send one message and it goes completely dead. Or you know they become the girl's pen pal and never make plans. That's very, very common, it's a huge, huge issue. And we will address that. I'll probably address that not just in one video, but maybe multiple other videos. I will absolutely get to that. Um, but I do wanna point out, that's kind of mid funnel. All the things I pointed out here are top of funnel. All the things I pointed out here are how you actually get the matches in the first place. Once you've done that, then you're ready to really focus on your messaging. And if you do want to dig into your messaging, I've actually just released a brand new messaging guide, which you can get at the link below. So check it out there. And again, I'll probably do some videos on messaging as well, but you're gonna love that guide. That's gonna give you a really good in-depth view of that aspect of it as well. So that's it for this video. I'll obviously have a ton more material coming out on online dating, so be sure and subscribe, hit notifications, all that kind of stuff so that you do see it. Also, if you have a specific question that you'd like answered on online dating, put it in the comments below, all right? Um, so yeah, like if you like, dislike if you dislike, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.